The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. to the Cashman Mind, Body, and Spirit Show. <laughs> I think you're going to find this very interesting uh, because this can affect the lives of many of us uh, and, and our friends and our relatives. This is very interesting information. And, and the name of the show is Statins, which are uh, medications uh, which we give uh, for people to lower their cholesterol. And you just look at the title of this book here uh, and, and what uh, they are saying, which I'll quote from this library, I'll, I'll show to other books, the cholesterol myth. It's a myth. Why lowering your cholesterol won't prevent heart disease and many other illnesses. Uh, and we will des describe the science of this in detail. I encourage you to read this. I have two other books here, which I'll hold up a little bit uh, later, but I quote liberally uh, from these books. And what I'm trying to say is, uh, I've done a tremendous amount of reading over the years, 1,500 books in my basement, but I like confirmation. And confirmation is that I have other sources. So I want you to use this uh, information uh, to gather it. You can Google it. You can read about it. You can look at, listen to podcasts. Uh, you can read these books because I don't want you to uh, start or stop the medication uh, without uh, the consent of the person that prescribed it for you. So gather the information because the side effects uh, of these medications are extremely serious. And you will know them when <laughs> I get done with you today. So let's get on the road, okay? And uh, uh, that they're, they've been selling them for years. There's about 10 main ones. I don't want to uh, name any one of them. I will, maybe will be a little bit later. Uh, and in reality, maybe there's 30 or 40 of, of them, but, and people have been on them for years. So... Uh, Statins are cholesterol-lowering stocks, drugs, okay? And uh, the trouble is, though, that it doesn't do us any good. It may do us a great deal of harm. And the reason being is that cholesterol is in every one of your body cells. Every cell has a covering on it. And guess what it's made from? Cholesterol. Yes, you need cholesterol to think properly. Uh, you need, uh, so lowering the uh, cholesterol doesn't do you really much good. It does not prevent heart disease. It may cause heart dis disease, and I'll explain to you shortly why. Uh, so, and what's really happening is we've had industry, government, medicine, we doctors promoted this on you to take these medications because we get a blood test and we are, and we look at the values of our LDL, our HDL, and the cholesterols, and then order the drug. But do you need it? That's the point. And most of the time, you you don't. So it's been a herd mentality. Uh, you could go to some hospitals in town today, where everyone say who's having vascular disease, a heart problem, they're all on a statin. 
I know three people that don't have statin, and I think they really uh, don't need it. So it's a herd mentality. So I want you to gather information before you accept the uh, prescription. What you need to know, cholesterol is a minor player in heart disease. It's a minor player. Poor predictor of heart disease, if your class elevated three or 400 way above and you say you're gonna get heart disease, not so. And 50% uh, of the people who die from heart disease have a normal cholesterol. Mm -hmm. That's been shown. Uh, so lowering your cholesterol with medication has very limited benefits. They speak about, well, uh, lowering the cholesterol didn't any good, so the companies uh, finally determined that maybe it reduces inflammation in your body a bit, and that is indeed the beginning of heart disease. But I will tell you, that eating the right food, exercising, would do more than taking a, a statin. Yes, and it, that has very few side effects, like taking a 30-minute walk in the morning. And uh, life cannot go on without cholesterol. You need it. it it's in every cell of your body. You, it is actually made by the glial cells of your brain so that you can think uh, properly. And people who take statins will have sudden memory loss. They're driving a car and all of a sudden they, they don't know where they're going. They can't find, can't find their home. That's a side effect of statins, things from the, from the uh, uh, who makes the statins, the liver? Your brain, yes, the glial cells of your brain make their own statin. They make their, make their own cholesterol. You need it for good memory. If you take a statin and you don't make your own cholesterol in your brain, you will have memory loss. Amnesia may last for days. Transient global amnesia may last 2 to 24 hours where you don't know where you're at. That has happened, and it's happened to people while they're driving a car, for example, or uh, uh, pros playing uh, basketball, for example, who were taking statins and all of a sudden forgot to get the, the game. That's happened. That's been been uh, reported. The 82% uh, of coronary events can be avoided by other things besides taking a statin drug. Don't smoke, okay, we all know that. Consuming a lot of alcohol kills brain cells uh, uh, and uh, can uh, lead also to heart attacks. Uh, moderate exercise helps prevent heart attacks. A healthy body mass index being a normal weight avoids heart attacks. Uh, and eat a low sugar diet. Those things will do a heck of a lot more than taking a statin drug, which has side effects and doesn't help you to boot. Okay, uh, so cholesterol generally is harmless. It also is used, you need it to make a vitamin D, which is extremely important in your life. Uh, cholesterol is in sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, so men and women uh, will have uh, tremendous problems with their sexu expressing their sexuality because they don't have these hormones because their cholesterol level is, is low because they're taking a statin. I know a person I counseled today who is having a problem with that and, and is taking a statin. And you wonder if his impotency uh, clearly is related to the statin as he has no other medical problem problems. It also affected his liver and affected his kidney. Uh, and uh, so the cholesterol travels in particles around your, your, your blood and, and 
they connect to proteins, so lipoproteins. Let me give you some names. Uh, so we have high density HDL uh, is one uh, blood measure. Uh, now they find out that HDL is, is more related to your genetics than any food you take uh, or any other thing you might do, eating properly, exercising to influence it. Then I think it's mainly uh, genetically determined. Uh, so uh, high HDL does nothing to prevent heart disease, strokes, or uh, prevent death. They've shown it statistically now. And uh, the, that's HDL2 uh, is protective, okay? HDL3, uh, small particles, uh, and they are pro-inflammatory. So that does make a difference there. Um, LDL, the low density LDL, um, A is beneficial that the fluffy molecules that go through your arteries and lead, lead to good health. LDLB is small and dense and, and causes atherosclerosis. It punches holes in the innermost layer of your blood vessels, the intima, and that's the start of the atherosclerotic uh, 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 process. Uh, so the new school way of looking at this is that it's the particle number that count. Is it over 100, for example? That may be uh, that you get a health problem. I was just trying to tell you a little bit about the cholesterol, how it exists in your body. Uh, um, the, uh, some papers have been published, uh, but the uh, publications that pro or con are mainly for using the statin drugs, uh, eight of the, the nine scientists had ties to the industry. So what do you think? Whether what they're talking about involves them making more money? I suspect uh, so. John Yutkin uh, questioned the recommendations, uh, and he's from the University of London, uh, and, and he determined that most of heart disease is related not to cholesterol, but to sugar. He, he published a very good book to read. I've read it a number of times, John Yutkin, uh, but industry kind of uh, played him down and it, the information did not get spread around. So inflammation is the real cause of heart disease, okay? So it's a better way to protect against heart disease. So good test is triglyceride HDL ratio. Uh, the lower, the better, if you're talking about a blood test, okay? So what injures a vessel's oxidation um, is the initiation of inflammation the small density of LDL punching holes in the uh, intima. And uh, so the four horsemen of the uh, copulates, uh, oxidation, uh, it just the browning and blackening of something can happen to the, to, to the arteries. Uh, 900 studies have been scientifically published. Um, and you can re read about that, that statins cause liver damage, kidney failure, type two diabetes, neurological problems, muscle degeneration, erectile dysfunction, many other effects. But 900 studies prove it. Liver disease, kidney disease, loss of memory, and on and on. So before you take the medication, gather some information as to why you're taking it. The only indication appears to be that it might reduce inflammation. But I've seen in books uh, that if you eat the right way and exercise a little bit, that will do more than taking a statin and you're not then exposed to the risk of taking the medication, okay? Uh, what the problem is that we have disease delusion. We all think um, uh, genetics 
It's what caused it. We inherited it. It's your genes. When in reality, 90% of the time, it, it's how we get our genes to express themselves. What we're eating, what we're doing, whether we're stressed, whether we exercise, what food are we putting down. Interesting. Let me tell you some more side effects of statins. Muscle cramps, general weakness, difficulty walking, loss of muscle mass, numbness, muscle spasms, dementia, liver disease, kidney disease, impotency, two to seven times the normal rate of that occurring as we get a day on. But it affects the sexuality of women too. Very important. A, a patient that I saw in follow-up recently uh, was on statins and had seen him previously, repeated his blood test. He'd been on it a number of years. And I noticed that his liver tests were out of whack. I thought the liver, was, he'd be dead in six months. The liver enzymes, the AST, the GGT, the alkaline phosphatase were out of hand, sky high. Something terrible going on in the liver and his statin was stopped, and within two months, those tests returned to normal. And he had a lot of the problems which I already read to you. Instantly enough, a few years ago, while he's on the statin, he developed a lot of back pain. He went to see an orthopedic surgeon, he got an x-ray, and. This gentleman is overweight in the early 70s, and you would expect the x-ray to show a lot of changes because he's big and he's older. Uh, and, and hardly anybody at that stage uh, has normal-looking x-rays in the L345 area in the low back. Even myself, we have no back pain. You would do an MRI or take x-rays in my back. You're going to see some changes, although I, I have no symptoms. And he ended up having a major fusion and rods and screws and all kind of stuff to his back. Now you do wonder whether his symptoms were not his x-ray. It was his muscles that were weak. Remember I told you the side effects of statins? And that is related uh, to the chemistry metabolism of how muscles operate. They, they, they uh, get their energy uh, produced in the Krebs cycle. That's the energy uh, 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 cycle. Uh, and the, uh, that is interfered with by the statins. So what he actually may have had is weak muscles, atrophied muscles, loss of muscle mass. And the doctor he was seeing said, oh, look at the x-ray. We need to operate on that. After surgery, he, he wasn't any better. He, st he still got the back pain. You see why you might have a, have a point there, OK? Uh, statins also cause decreased immunity, OK? And, and like I said, muscle cramps, general weakness, muscle weakness, difficulty walking, loss of muscle mass, numbness, dementia, liver disease, kidney disease. I repeat all that for you to realize if you're on the drug or you're going to take the drug that you're aware of this. I didn't say not to take it. I didn't say to stop it. I said gather uh, information. Uh, and what they do, you decrease immunity, is it turns down uh, the immune system, the uh, kappa NFKB enzymes, uh, uh, which the body uses to fight infection, okay? And, uh, and, and this has to do with the mevalinate metabolic system, whole kind of enzymatic reaction, uh, M-E-V-A-L-I-N-A-T-E, -E, uh, which is close to the uh, Krebs cycle, the NSD cycle, that makes ATP, your energy mo molecule. Uh, so it's a living... Uh, living cells, statins, affect that. 
so it affects many systems because all systems in your body is, are dependent on energy. Your little uh, mitochondria, which are little energy molecules in every cell of your body, their metabolic system involves ATP and energy, uh, uh, and the statins affect that directly. That's the bottom line. So it affects many things. And, uh, and this was, uh, some doctors studied that in detail, the research, uh, uh, great research papers, they tried to publish that uh, in the archives of internal medicine, and they rejected the paper. Oh, why do you think that? Hmm? I made a double blind studies in the, the, of excellent quality. I suspect they had a contact with industry. And then it, it was rewritten and uh, sent to the uh, Annals of Internal Medicine, and they also rejected it. I'm sure they have their own reasons, uh, but, uh, but finally, many years later, the Food and Drug Administration, who are responsible to us, our taxes go to them, February 18th, 2012, agreed to change the label of statins on their side effects thing, every statin. But that was like eight or 10 years later. A lot of people had died since uh, uh, that time. Uh, and uh, let me emphasize again, one of the things I mentioned to you already, statins can cause memory loss, amnesia, confusion, transient global amnesia, which can last two to 24 hours. One of these books that have written the dark side of statins um, by Dwayne Graveline, MD, another book I encourage you uh, to read. Uh, that's really his story. He, that's the reason he became interested. He had global amnesia. I mean, he had essentially total memory loss. He didn't know what day it was where he was located, where he was doing, couldn't remember anything. And then with it, and he had two or three episodes of that. He started taking an interest, and then he realized it was st the statin that he was taking. Uh, yeah, okay. And uh, so then he published another book before that even. Um, and the name of it is Lip Lipitor, that's one of the statin drugs, hyphen thief of memory was published, Thief of Memory, the Lipidor, Thief of the Memory. He published that. That's what he was taking. Uh, and it happened while driving a car, the original one. And uh, so he had what he called TGA, Transient Global Amnesia. Last two to 24 hours, you can imagine, it could be fatal, extremely scary. Uh, your doctor may not realize it was the drug that uh, did it. The patient I was talking about had abnormal liver tests, renal tests, three or four years while he was on the statin, and the doctor never brought it up. Mm -hmm. But I brought it up within a week ago when I re-ran the test. And uh, again, as I mentioned previously, Statin's effect was called a reductive, reductase uh, enzyme. Uh, so it, it's a step along the pathway of energy production, the Krebs cycle, the suctional conate uh, well, Krebs cycle. Uh, so it's reductive, reductase inhibition is what the statin does. And uh, uh, Statins can drop the cholesterol 50 points in a few weeks. And the doctors, industry, patients thought, it's got to be a great drug. And we were brainwashed. Uh, we were brainwashed. We started recommending all the time because if you follow up tests, you can see the drop. We say, well, that is what's causing your illness when that was not the cause, okay? Uh, what, it, what is really, uh, it affects the, the 
Q10. That's one of the enzymes that, that is uh, related to this pathway uh, in the Krebs cycle, acetyl-CoA, kappa B. These are all uh, enzymatic uh, pathways that are related to this. Uh, so when you uh, take a statin, it, it, it's like girding, or cutting the tr trunk of the tree. And you notice we've had a lot of that lately, <laughs> driving down the street, all these storms. Uh, I even lost a tree. And, uh, uh, but when you take that statin, you're cutting the tree at the base and also affecting all the branches, all the other things, the, the memory, the heart, the kidney, the liver. Uh, it affects the nervous system a great deal. And a lot of these neuromuscular diseases, Alzheimer's disease, ALS, MS, a lot of those are found in patients who are on statins. And the trouble is you, you, you stop the statin, a significant number do not return to normal. You say, it can't be the drug. Well, the re they found out now the reason that many don't return to normal is, remember you talked about the energy molecules that you have? Well, they have DNA in there, and DNA expresses itself as to uh, what that cell can do, uh, but the statins cause permanent changes in the genes of the mitochondria which affected you, and you stopped the drug. But because there's been a genetic change, you don't get better. Some do. You prevent a lot of stuff, but a significant number do not improve because they have permanent change in their genes. So I'm a little bit concerned about the patient I have who all his liver enzymes are turned to normal, but now we're facing his advanced renal disease. The GFR was 38, and almost 100. Five, you need new kidneys. 15, you need to be, uh, uh, 20, 15, you need to be dialyzed. We're trying to avoid all that. Uh, will his kidney disease reverse itself? We'll see. I'm going to check his GFR uh, monthly. I placed him on a proper eating schedule. Uh, also taught him time regulated eating. Uh, where 16 8, where you fast 16 hours. Uh, that can cause your cells to cleanse themselves, repair themselves. We'll see if it works. I, I hope and pray that we do. Uh, uh, and uh, but as I mentioned already, a lot of that is mitochondrial genetic mutation already by the statin, and that may not get the job done. Uh, and we talked about the uh, Q10, uh, an enzyme uh, that is needed. It affects ATP, help produce uh, energy. Uh, that level of Q10 is down, people have been on statin. And in Canada, they've given Q10 along with the statin drug for ones who are taking it, say, for inflammation. Remember what I said. The only indication really is inflammation in the body and maybe eating properly, exercising properly, it could be a good substitute for the only indication. I know of a nutrition teacher who is adamant about it, as a matter of fact, she, when I talked to her what she knew about the statins, she said there should be a class action lawsuit. All the people that they have harmed. Well, maybe she's got a point. I'm just talking here. And uh, uh, atherosclerosis, which we know uh, causes vascular disease, is an inflammatory uh, uh, process uh, and is started by inflammation, but not cholesterol. The literature has proven now, isn't it interesting? Um, and 
let me review things a little bit. Remember we spoke about uh, the uh, David Graveline, uh, the doctor who had uh, global amnesia, uh, transient global amnesia, where his mind left him for a number of hours. He, he had a whole bunch of these episodes, so he started looking into it. Uh, so cholesterol is needed for brain function, okay? Our brain is mainly fat. It's mainly fat. It, but it's a different cholesterol than that's in our body. Uh, and the cholesterol is made by the glial cells. And when we take statins, we turn the manufacturing of the special cholesterol in the brain off. Interest, interesting. And uh, so brain cholesterol is made by those glial cells. They're more in the middle, middle of the brain, okay? And uh, so how can we determine whether inflammation is occurring in your body? Uh, a good test is HS high sensitivity hyphen C R P C R P H S hyphen C R P get get that blood test. Fortunately, uh, mine is under one. Okay, I know of someone who recently had heart surgery, diabetes, which results in more vascular disease. Uh, her C R P was eight. And it was eight for years. A family doctor did not act on it. It was even shown to a cardiac surgeon. He said, oh, that's nothing. Mm. It was something because that person had a totally obstructed left recurrent coronary and had to be operated uh, recently. Um, instantly enough, the hospital in town here now has her on a statin, mm -hmm. has her on a statin, which can produce a lot of side effects. A little concerned about that, and I'm going to see, go see that hospital and talk to them about it. So they're aware, I've asked them if they had read this. Maybe they have a reason for giving it that I don't know about, okay? And uh, so, the Q10 I spoke about, remember, is essentially for energy production, especially heart cells. Our heart cells, the pump that has to work around the clock, uh, otherwise you'd, you'd not be here, uh, has more Q10 than any cells in, in your body. Uh, and uh, they help generate energy in the mitochondria. They require Q10. Remember, those are the small organelles that are in every cell of your body. Some parts of the body more than others. Muscles, hearts have more of them, okay? Q10 drops 20% in the people who are on statins. They, me they measure them. And uh, uh, Dr. Andrew Weil, who's published many books on health, recommends uh, Q10 with statins. I don't know how he feels about statins. He seems to recommend some, but I don't want to quote him since I didn't read all the stuff. I read some of his books. Uh, uh, incidentally, the blood sugar is increased with statins. Diabetes, uh, if you're on statins, it can help produce diabetes. Is, isn't that uh, interesting? To Bring home the science a little more. Remember, and here's a book by David Evans, Statin's Toxic Side Effects, Evidence from 500 Scientific Studies. If you doubt me, look at this. I found it on the internet, I ordered, and I have a number of copies at home. You can't afford it. Give me a call. Maybe I'll give you one free. <laughs> but this is no kidding matter. I'm going to 
review uh, some of this. And what they have done is taken every one of these 500 scientific papers uh, and they put in the, um, the headlines. I'm going to read some of those to you in case you're not convinced yet. Remember, I'm handing out information. Way to get it. Make up your own mind. But paper number one, statins increase the risk of serious adverse cardiovascular events. Based on a study, and they published it, uh, uh, and uh, then they list I'm not going to read you every one of these, but I'll just give you some idea. Cholesterol levels reduced by 33% in the statin users and remained the same in those in the placebo, uh, the ones who took uh, nothing. Uh, Low-density LDL cholesterol levels reduced by 49% in statin users and remained the same in those on placebo. Statin users had a 20%, 1% increased risk of death compared to ones taking nothing. 21%. Here's one. Statin users had a 423% increased risk of serious adverse cardiovascular events compared to placebo. Can you imagine it? 423% increase, not decrease, in the statin users. And... Uh, Statin users had a 5% increased risk of developing cancer compared to the ones who didn't take it. And uh, statin users had a 121% increased risk of elevated liver enzymes compared to placebo. Remember I mentioned to you my patient whose liver enzymes are just out of sight? And we stopped the statin and they returned to normal. Fortunately, he didn't die in the meanwhile, though I think they've been as elevated for a few years. And uh, statin users had a 42% increased risk of joint pain. And why do you think that is? Remember what I mentioned about the muscles become weak, muscle spasms and the atrophy. What do you think? The muscles are not holding you up and the joints are taking the heat and the joints start hurting. Makes sense to me. I'm sure you understand, uh, uh, too. Let's go on to another paper. And here they mention the drug. I'm just quoting out of this book. Simvastatin is associated with higher death rates, higher cardiac death rates, and increased risk of cancer. Oh, jeez. Yeah, they, they've named the drug. They did controlled studies. This is published. It's not my opinion. It, 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 it's, it's their opinion. And uh, let me read you uh, the professor who published this paper. The patients receiving simvastatin had a 117% increased risk of death compared to the patients receiving no drug. 117%. The patients receiving simvastatin had a 76% increased risk of cardiac death compared to the patients receiving nothing. The patients receiving semivastatin had a 225% increased risk of non-cardiac death compared to the patients receiving nothing. I mean, just think of it. Think of it. The patients receiving semivastatin had a 78% increased risk of cancer compared to the patients receiving nothing. I think I'd be concerned about uh, that medication. I don't know whether they still prescribe it or not, but maybe they do. Paper number three. I'm not going to go through all 500. <laughs> I'll just read this. Scientists raise fears of cancer linked to statin use by thousands. Those taken, and he, he had the name other ones, uh, other medications too, but they mentioned simvastatin uh, again. Here's one, paper four. 
Lower statin increases the death rate by 150 to 300 percent. Lower statin. I know somebody that's on that. Okay. And uh, high, statins have high instances of clinical adverse experiences requiring patients to discontinue the treatment for found in the subjects taken statins. And if 50% more patients taking 80 milligrams daily, statins discontinued their treatment compared to a patient taking uh, nothing. So again, a, a lot of proof. Paper number five. Statin uses associated with increased risk of adverse events and death in patients undergoing coronary bypass surgery for unstable angina. Mm -hmm. And uh, number six, cardiac surgery patients taking statins have a 24% increased risk of death. Remember, I know a patient that had cardiac surgery and they were on statins. Mm -hmm. This is right in there. Paper seven, statin taking cardiac surgery patients have a 42% increased risk of death. Remember I said, I know of a hospital in town here where every cardiac patient is on a statin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paper number eight, statins increase the risk of hospital-acquired thrombocytopenia in heart attack patients. Heart patients do have inflammation. We did the CRP test, probably is elevated. They order their statin, and that's what happened, okay? And uh, let me read a little more detail. Those who use statins had a 228% increased risk of developing hospital-acquired thrombocytopenia compared to those who did not use statins. How about that? Affects the clotting factors. Those who developed hospital-acquired thrombocytopenia had a 270% higher in-hospital rates of major hemorrhagic complications. Those who developed hospital-acquired thrombocytopenia had 156% greater requirement for blood transfusions. Those who developed a hospital-acquired thrombocytopenia had a 33% longer hospital stay. Those who developed hospital-acquired thrombocytopenia had a 400% increased rate of death after 30 days. My God, it's devastating. Those who develop hospital-acquired thrombocytopenia had 156% increased risk of death after one year. Devastating statistics. I, mean, I begin to see the point, uh, what someone said to me, that person I spoke to who knew a lot about statins, the, 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 a lady who said she thinks a class action sh shoot should be filed involving many, many people, organization, pharma, hospitals, maybe as physicians. And, and, I mean, it's devastating as to what I'm reading. And I'm just, you know, at number nine, paper 10, lower statin treatment is associated with higher death rate and a higher risk of heart attack in angioplasty patients. Patients receiving lovastatin had a 200% increased risk of death compared to the patients receiving placebo, uh, nothing. Patients receiving lovastatin had 170%, 177% increased risk of a heart attack compared to the patients receiving no medication. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is scary, okay? All right, num number 11. Probostatin treatment increases the risk of death by 301% after balloon angioplasty. Well said. They found that the patients on statin treatment had a 301% increased risk of death compared to the patients receiving placebo. Wow. And uh, this is devastating stuff that I'm reading here. And uh, number 13. 
Statins are independently and significantly associated with a higher risk of death in elderly patients with heart failure. Fourteen, statins double the risk of death in patients with coronary artery disease. Yeah. I mean, double the risk. Fifteen, stroke victims taking statins have a 140% increased risk of infection. Devastating. Devastating. Patients taking simvastatin had a 140% increased risk of infection compared to patients taking placebo. It's, I'm just quoting these papers. I'm not, it's not my opinion. And uh, 16, the adverse effects of statins on stroke uh, patients. And they have a list here. The patients in the statin group had a 363% increased risk of elevated levels of the liver enzymes, uh, alanine aminotransferase, and aspartate aminotransferase compared to the placebo group, indicating, again, changes uh, in the liver. Here's one. This, the size of a brain hemorrhage was 95% larger in the patients taking statins compared to the patients not taking statins. So it affects the ability to clot. Um, the size of the brain hemorrhage increased by an extra 1,100% in the patients taking statins compared to patients not taking statins. And that, of course, is related to the ability to clot, which we uh, discussed before. And uh, stroke patients, number 18, stroke patients taking statins have a 32% increased risk of death. Pretty significant, and I'm sure it has a lot to do with the size of the brain, brain hemorrhage. Uh, and uh, number 19, remember I got 500 of these. <laughs> I would, I'll probably be done at 20, okay, or less. Probably less. Statin use is associated with a 68% increased risk of death in patients with stroke associated infection. Number 20. <laughs> have a cent. Come on. We have to. This is such sad news, but we still got to smile occasionally. Statin use is associated with increased risk of brain hemorrhage after stroke treatment. I think we got that pretty well figured out. Statin users had a 2 and 10% increased risk of intracranial hemorrhage compared to non users. You know, there's another paper. Here's a, a, another statin drug, 21. Atorvastatin, A T O R B A statin, increases the death rate in diabetic patients. Those who were assigned this drug had a 91% increased risk of cancer compared to those taking no medication. The word cancer has come up quite often. 22. Statin treatment increases cardiovascular disease in diabetics by 31%. See, most people, almost 90 something percent of the people who uh, have diabetes, have vascular disease. Mm -hmm. It's true. Statins increase the risk of death by 21% in women with breast cancer. Interesting. And uh, women taking statins had a 49% increased risk of death from causes other than breast cancer compared to women not taking statins. Wow. Here's another one. There's a link between statins and bladder cancer. And uh, in the 931 patients with the first time diagnosis of non-muscle non invasive bladder cancer, those who used statins had a 27% increased risk of death from bladder cancer and a 15% increased risk of death from any cause compared to those who did not use statins. So it seems to be affecting everything. And uh, 
27. Fluvastatin, F-L-U-V-A-S, statin, increases the risk of death in kidney transplant patients. How about that, huh? And uh, the low-density LDL cholesterol of those in the fluvastatin group were lowered by 32% compared to the placebo group. Those in the fluvastatin group had a 2% increased risk of death compared to those in the placebo group. 28. Review 14 studies finds that statins increase their risk of death by 30% in kidney transplant patients. I mean, they get trouble enough that they don't need that. Okay. Paper 29. Statin treatment leads to worse outcome for patients in an intensive care unit. Interesting. Uh, Patients taking statins had a 22% increased risk of organ failure compared to patients not taking statins. I think I'm presenting overwhelming evidence. We have a problem here, yet the Food and Drug Administration really did not step up to bat and maybe consider outlawing the distribution of these drugs, or at least to look at all of them and, and present a recommendation. A lot of people are dying here, becoming disabled here in our, in our, in our government agencies that are supposed to control our drugs that pharmaceuticals are, are selling. Uh, Needs some oversight. It's obvious there's collusion going on here. My opinion. It's just an opinion. And uh, uh, paper 32, stopping statins lowers the risk of death in patients hospitalized with acute infections. Well, we believe that, but no. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, so... 33, statins are associated with a decreased myocardial function, with decreased heart function. We, we knew that liver function we knew already, but now we have the heart. Atrio vastatin, A-T-O-R vastatin versus heart function in 71% of patients. Paper 34. Mm -hmm. Paper 35, simvastatin, that's a Treatment lowers the, the energy producing nutrient coenzyme Q10, which you know is necessary for muscle movement and energy and, and uh, interesting. And uh, patients treated with semvastatin had a significantly lower Q10 levels than either patients receiving diet alone or normal controls. Statin tr number, number 36, statin treatment may lead to heart failure. These are all published studies of controls, one without the drug, with the drug, lasting years, for years, many of these, okay? And uh, people treated with lovastatin may be s subjected to a possible increased impairment of health and even to a life-threatening status. Paper 37, again, double-blind studies, um, and, and they outline their, their uh, uh, scientific findings in such detail that we don't have time to go through them, okay? And uh, I mean, the tremendous details they have. Paper 38, atrial fibrillation, that's where the heart going like that, is induced by simvastatin, S-I-M-B-A-S statin. And uh, 39, statin users have an 82% higher risk of microalbuminuria. Uh, that indicates kidney disease, and, and that one is interesting that a study found that statin users had 82% higher risk of 
microalbuminuria compared to non-users that indicates the kidney is not functioning very well, that the glomeruli and that will work very well. And that interests me a great deal, that statement, because remember, this patient I have that where his liver enzymes are treated are normal, but his kidney tests are, are still abnormal, but he, we just, he wanted to stop the statin himself. I said, check with your doctor. Uh, but he, he told me he was going to do it. I showed him this book. And that's a good, and uh, so I think if you have been fall asleep and listen to everything I read to you, summarize, the views and you would realize before you would take the drug or think about maybe stopping the drug, talk to your doctor, maybe a number of doctors, go to the internet, Listen to my show a couple of times and, and, and make your mind. But this is something you, you can't do without information. So gather the information. I may have saved your life. Uh, I may have saved that patient I spoke about because his liver enzymes are turned to normal. Maybe his uh, gamal flotation rate will return to normal, even if it, I, I can increase it 10 or 20 points. Uh, he, he can lead an, a, a normal life. Uh, and his muscle pains might go away because uh, he would have the enzymes for the muscles to work properly. So I, I appreciate you listening. You listen to my other shows. You can go to Rudy Cashman YouTube. I've got about... Uh, 15 years worth of shows on there from health about um, diabetes. And, 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 and this is the first show I think I've done on, on statins. But I'm just trying to see that you live to be 100 and you can tap dance with me or challenge me in pickleball, which I play five days a week. I'm 39 for the 46th time. No pills, 135 pounds. Feel good. Every day, I take a walk like I did today uh, by the river downtown, wearing a bright shirt. I, my age 39 for the 46th time. Three girls walk up to me and, and, and say hello, nice shirt, or I know you from whatever. So I was trying to say is getting a day older is not the end of the world. <laughs> I do this because I love you, and thanks for watching the show. <laughs> Namaste.